Hi everyone, I have a really fun project to share with you today. We are going to use the new Lawn Fawn and Ellen Hudson collaboration stamp set called The S'more the Merrier and Lawn Fawn's Magic Iris Die to make this adorable little magic iris card with a little campfire and s'mores theme. And it's gonna say everything is s'more fun with friends. And so let's go ahead and get started by making our background. So I have a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock here and some Distress Oxide inks. The first color was Mustard Seed. The second color is Wild Honey. And what I'm trying to do is in our background, it's going to look like we have a campfire against the backdrop of a, a starry summer night. So the center of our card panel is going to have the glow of the fireplace. And then the edges is going to have the like darkness of the summer night. So we're going to use some um, seedless preserves, chip sapphire and black soot to make the night sky. And then those colors that we used for the fire and the glow around the campfire are mustard seed, um, wild honey and barn door. So those are the six colors you'll need to make this design. So I'm just going around the edges now with my chip sapphire and we're making kind of like a rainbow. We're using all the shades of the rainbow except for green here. And um, we are gonna cut this panel down a little bit with a Magic Iris cover plate. So um, I'm not minding too much if I get some smudges on the edges because those parts are gonna be cut off. And then I'm just going around the edges with some black just to give a real, real nice contrast to the scene. And I'm just gonna blend in the little glow of the fire a little bit more by going back with my other colors. And then when I get the blend that I like, I'm gonna take a water bottle and just spritz my background a couple of times, let it sit for maybe about 15, 20 seconds, and then blot it with a wet, I'm um, sorry, with a dry paper towel. Now we're gonna use some of the Lawn Fawn Sparkle um, Stardust liquid, and I put it on an acrylic block, watered it down just a little bit with a spritz of water, and then I'm gonna splash it all over the background so it just looks all sparkly and shiny, and maybe those are stars in the background, or maybe it's just like the magic glow of summer. You know, you can decide. Now, this was probably my favorite part of the project was making these letters. So I'm using Oliver's Alphabet um, from Lawn Fawn, and I cut out the word s'more. So we're gonna replace part of the sentiment in the S'more the Merrier stamp set with these um, big block letters. I just lately I've been loving doing that with my card designs like replacing one of the words of the sentiment with some big block letters. It just gives a real interesting look to the design. And we're going to color in our letters so that they kind of look like s'more. So we're going to have the chocolate on the bottom with some I think that was espresso or walnut stain and then some vintage photo for like the graham crackery crust part. A little bit of antique linen just to give a melty marshmallow effect. And then for the best part of this whole process, we're gonna take some puff embossing powder by Hero Arts and a lacquer pen, which is kind of like a, a glossy accents um, type of liquid. And we're gonna make melty um, marshmallow bits on top of our letter. So these are the products I'm using from Hero Arts. Um, I think any textured embossing powder would probably work as long as it's white. Um, but the puffy embossing powder, really, you're gonna see when we heat it with the heat gun, just what a cool puffy effect that you get um, using that. So I'm just, um, Again, fixing it so that the, the puffy part is only towards the top of the lettering because I want those other colors to show through. And then I heat it and it gets all beautiful and puffy and it really does look like melted marshmallows on a, fire, on a campfire. We're gonna do the same with the other layers and I left um, all this in just because I feel like it's so satisfying to watch the white embossing powder just get all fluffy and puffy when you set it with the heat gun. So we're gonna do that with the M. And I'm just, again, focusing that, those melty parts on the tops of the letters. And it's important to use a little tweezer like I have here. You don't want to um, have your fingers anywhere near the, the heat tool when you're heating these letters up. You could definitely um, burn yourself. So always have, you could use a clothespin as well here if you don't have a tweezer like I do. 
and then the O, just love that. Um, if you really wanted them to have a, a super duper melty marshmallow effect, you could go over this again. So you could add a second layer of the puff paint and the lacquer pen if you um, wanted like, I don't know, extra marshmallow on your s'mores, you could do that. One thing that I love about this technique is that you could use it. I think this would be great for Christmas cards. So you could make it look like there's snow sitting on top of your lettering. Um, if you want to use it for Christmas cards, that's an idea. You might even be able to make it look like the fluffy, foamy part of a wave if you wanted to use it in like a summer themed or beach themed card. Um, this would be good for a coffee card. It could look like the cream on top of a latte. So another way to kind of use this technique with your cards. And then to make sure the letters stand, st stand out, I went and I die cut three more letters and then I um, glued them all in a stack and then stacked it right below our um, colored letter so that I have four die cuts a layer of four die cuts for each letter so that they, they're they going to stand up really, really nicely on the card. And that's an alternative to using foam tape. You could do that too, but I don't think it would look as nice. Um, I love um, just stacking my letters with many layers, even though it takes a little time to die cut and glue. Okay, so now we're going to put the magic iris together and we're going to go pretty quickly. I have some other videos that are more in depth on putting together magic iris cards if you want more instruction. Um, but I am going to show the whole process here. So I've cut out all of my pieces. You cut out three of the discs, three of these little sausage pieces, um, three of the little clips that you'll see in a second. You do need these really tiny one eighth of an inch um, little glue dots here. Um, you can't use a larger glue dot or another kind of adhesive. The mechanism won't work well so you do need to get these 1 8 inch glue dots so that's one thing I think is worth pointing out. I'm gonna line up my pieces just like this and then add another disc on top and just set that down flip it over and then add my adhesive wherever I see those little um, dotted lines and then I'm gonna add the my three strips there and then I'm going to flip over my little disc package again and add this little flap here and we're going to make a little V to the side of one of our flaps put another disc on top and then add some adhesive to these little fasteners and then just fold them in towards the center and that's all you need to do for the magic iris mechanism to work and then we're just going to add this little handle to it so again, I'm gonna line it up so it's flush against the outside of the rim and then cut off the extra piece, add in my little arrow. And that's gonna tell the recipient that this is an interactive card and they need to move the lever down to get the mechanism to work. And now we can put everything together. So that little center piece, I'm gonna make sure that I line that up so it's right in the center of my card panel. I'm gonna just draw a little pencil mark around it so that when I go to glue down this dot, I get it in the right spot. And um, you do need to be pretty exact here because otherwise it'll look like you have a gap in your background if you don't place it exactly right. We're gonna add the little owl, owl playing the banjo or the guitar um, to the background. Uh, if you wanna learn how to color the images, I'm gonna post another video in a couple of days um, showing another version of this card where I left in all the Copic coloring. So I'll show you how to get a little glow around your little characters around the campfire as well, um, as well as just you know what colors to use for their fur and the technique to use to get the little hedgehog's fur to look like they're those little spikes there. So just stay tuned for that. In a couple of days, we'll have a Copic coloring tutorial for another version of um, this card using the S'more the Merrier stamp set. Um, just placing all our little guys around our campfire now. And our sentiment is going to say, um, everything is s'more fun with friends. So we're going to, when you receive the card, you'll see the little hedgehog and the little squirrel 
um, around the campfire and then the little owl will be hidden behind the window so then when you open the window the owl will pop up and he'll be playing the banjo and I just think that goes nicely with the the sentiment of the card um, just that you know it's so much more fun when you have a group of friends all together so don't worry I am gonna glue on our little oh the in the right direction <laughs> I think I do at least let's see what happens um, so when I'm placing letters like this where you really need to get the correct um, placement I just leave my letters on the card as I glue them down just so that I don't um, make any mistake in terms of where I'm placing them I'm using liquid adhesive here because um, these letters I wanted to make sure that they stuck well to the background and they don't come up so um, also as you know with li liquid adhesive you don't really get a do-over if you don't place it right whereas with the tape runner you can kind of move things around if you don't like exactly how it looks. So I'm just being careful with um, those letters. And I'm going to use the adhesive for the other items that I glue down here. So for the bottom of the sentiment, I did pop it up on a layer of foam tape just so that it stood out a little from the background. We're going to add these little marshmallows to the bottom as a little decoration. Um, and then we're going to draw smiley faces on them. I'm going to take a Copic multi-liner in point one and just draw some smiley faces you could also if you have other lawn fawn sets they've got lots of different variations of smiley faces so if you have the pea set or the jelly bean set um, you can you know use that as well if you wanted if you didn't want to hand draw it in now we're going to place everything together so i added some adhesive to the front of our magic slider mechanism i'm lining it up with our card front so that the arrow is perfectly in that little um, half circle window there and now I'm going to add two layers of foam tape to the back making sure to keep the foam tape out of the way of that lever so on the left hand side you don't want that lever to come into contact with any tape because then your mechanism won't work and then I'm just placing it right on top of our card panel I'm using navy um, a cardstock by hero arts for our base I thought it went really really nice with the color scheme and then that's it. So here is our magic slider card with our fun s'mores and campfire theme. And let's just play around a little bit, opening and closing it. So we start off and we have our two little guys have in front of the campfire and then it gets way more fun when their third friend pops up. Um, I just, I love this card. I had so much fun making it. And I hope you all give this card a try. It's a lot of fun. And I think anyone that you send this card to will feel very, very special. So have a great day, everyone. And I will see you again in a few more days with a Copic coloring tutorial if you want to learn how to make these little um, critters look like they're glowing by the fire. Thanks so much. Have a great day. And I'll see you again soon.